everybody. Welcome to another episode of Family Dynamics. Hi, it's Liz. Hi, it's Catherine. I'm Ed. And we have two... Well, also John. Oh, yeah, right. Well, so I didn't know if you were on mic or off mic today. Because we have two special guests. We have a really full studio. Our two nephews, Jack and William. Say hi to everybody. Hello, I'm Jack. Hello, I'm William. So these are our two nephews who are 20 years old. Jack is the son of Rosemary Fogg, our younger sister, who has been on our podcast before. Mm -hmm. And William is, drum roll please, we've had James on the podcast before. This is James's oldest son, William. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Of course. We need to get the girls in, but first we got the two nephews because they're in town. So that was nice to get them into the studio. Yeah, you're both currently in in college, same age, so you're both mm-hmm. going into your junior. Yeah. Oh, oh my that's God. crazy. Mm-hmm. God. Okay. Halfway done. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like slow down world. So I just was in your state, Jack, your mm-hmm. college state, Utah. Mm-hmm. Utah just does not disappoint, man. It really doesn't. Gorgeous. I don't understand the hate it gets. Who? You know, what? What? Dry Mormon too much snow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> Those are like the three so hitting points of like they're every forgetting conversation. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. They're, I mean, they're I... forgetting you could just visit and then leave and then it's fine. <laughs> also, that See? that's true. I mean, I will. I will say I got off the plane, and at first I'm like, wow, there are so many people here with signs greeting people as they come back from oh their Mormon missions. Yes. So yes. like, oh, oh, okay, okay. No, they really at first was like I have never seen this many people like standing out waiting for people to greet you know them as they exit the airport. I was like, where's our side? Where's Brother Samuel? Yes, it was Brother this. Your mission in Tokyo. Your this and that. And I thought, God, your mission was during COVID. What a bummer. <laughs> like, oh. No. It's Going to Rio de Janeiro during COVID. Exactly. So you've left the state. Big old move. Mm -hmm. And you, William, you stayed in California and you're Mm -hmm. going to... Cal Poly. San Luis Obispo. They call it slow, right? They do. But you have to be pretty smart to go there. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's also (laughs) business majors. So, you know. Wow. Business majors. (laughs) Watch out. Wait, is that like an undercut? (laughs) Yeah. Kind of um, is. Yeah, honestly. That's like the communications. Like, hey, I'm a communications major. I should have said comms. I have a couple friends that are comms majors. How dare you? My gosh. I mean, mean, that's what I was. All right. So anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Now, what is your major then now? I am studying civil engineering. Oh, jeez. So mm. smart. And what are you studying? As opposed to mean engineering? It's as opposed to military engineering. Uh, military, okay. distinction. Oh, C- civil. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> he he, he oh, yeah, was yeah. making a pun. <laughs> There's, oh, get ready for a lot of puns with Uncle Ed. It is not mellowed oh, out a bit. I should it. I agree. Jack, what's your major currently? Uh, it's film and media studies with production emphasis and oh. entrepreneurship minor. Entrepreneurship. Oh, oh, so like you watch all the way to the end of the credits on everything. <laughs> everything. Nice. Every nice. Okay, well that's that's the exact same spot that John and I are in. So great. Good. Yeah. Sort yeah. of in the family business. Yeah. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. So you plan to move back to LA then after graduation? I mean, yeah, that's the plan. Unless something comes my way out in Utah or somewhere in like the Midwest or something like that. Well, listen, I just like I said, I was just there. And I was staying at a development called Promontory, which the show Yellowstone, which is very, you know, successful, they filmed a bunch there. But I guess, you know, now I think you will be coming back to L.A. because Utah took away the tax credits for filming. Oh, no. So a lot of film productions have left. Ooh. So hopefully we'll get you back for that reason alone. So that would be good. Yeah, no. I, I probably will be coming back at the end of the day. I mean, it's like the biggest yes. city in the world and, for this kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, and your so. family is here, and we'd love to have you back. It's been interesting, William. You've sort of been all over, you know, both the United the States. The planet? Partial, well, planet. I mean, when you were born in London, mm-hmm. I remember literally going to dinner with your parents. I was in town visiting with my husband at the, he we were married i'm like well let me get the dates right yeah but we didn't have our son and we went out to dinner and you came with us because you were so little used to being breastfed <laughs> it was like also we'd having this conversation like oh yeah the baby's Th- thanks here. aunt liz right okay. thanks okay yeah. little baby's here no 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 <laughs> oh sorry yes but, uh, <laughs> but almost like oh yeah william's here so you were born in london how long were you in london and then where'd you go f- move with the family from there I don't even know. I think it was like half a year in London. Oh, that's it. Yeah, very brief. And then briefly in New Jersey for like two years, maybe. So I have no memory of anything before California. Oh, yeah, because then the family moved very close to our homestead Mm -hmm. for quite a few years. 
And that's even where, JP, your youngest brother was born Correct. in Woodland Hills. Mm-hmm. I, for some reason, thought you were in London longer. I gave it did you, feel like I longer, gave you more yeah. international credit. I yeah. thought, because I visited while you guys were in London, and you were close to a year then. Okay. You were working on words and walking. Honestly, you guys probably have more information on this topic than I do. <laughs> He's like, I was a so, child, well, listen, like a wa- baby child. And yeah. Plus, he was a Kilwan when you're like working on words and walking. And they oh, were very advanced. <laughs> <laughs> so far, it wouldn't surprise me. But yeah, I mean, and then Woodland Hills. And then you moved, the whole family moved up north, Northern California. Yeah, to the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is beautiful. What was sad? Because you have, there's five kids in your family. Which is interesting because your mother has 13 siblings. Yeah. So oh, she's you, one of 13. Is that right? Yeah. So 12 one of the, siblings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, and we you are, knew the number. The number is 13, right. but yeah. just had a slightly different position in it. Yeah, we have eight yeah. siblings in our family. So James is the only one that sort of followed the trend mm-hmm. and had five kids. <laughs> Otherwise, all of us. Well, I only have one little dude, but you have two and. Rosie and Kirk have two. two. two, and two. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of twos. There's a lot of twos. It's a little disappointing. None of us were brave enough, William. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> oh my gosh. But I mean, you know, I look at your. Well, you three- also had James out there leading the pack. And you're like, well, we're good. Right. We got one doing it. Do we really need to join him with a whole nother dozen? I mean, I would say when even I was your age as a 20 year old, I thought I'd have like four kids. Mm. You just thought you'd have more because we came from such a big family. And then it's just exhausting. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I always admired your mom, Michelle, because like, wow, it's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Five kids is like, holy moly. Just mm-hmm. the juggling of everything oh, yeah. that's going the on. The lunches. And you guys really did not, we didn't either, but you really did not watch television at all in your household growing up, right? No, hardly. If we ever did, it was kind of like as a secret like yeah, I don't know. Maybe well, like we can relate to that. JP yeah. upstairs, you know, get a, get a quick five minutes in. <laughs> that is what we would do. My mom, our mother, would leave the house, and the TV would be on. And unfortunately, it was in the front room, and it kind of angled enough to the street that if she pulled up in the driveway, she could see the glow. Mm-hmm. So you're like, oh my gosh! And then you crawl in your stomach, like military style, to turn it off. And then she'd walk in. And if she really wanted to nail it, she'd walk right in to the television and put her hand on top of it and it was hot. She's like, who was watching television? Mm. And then we decide who would take the hit and <laughs> say they had to do a current event. Oh yeah, sometimes somebody uh, would be brave enough to be like, leave it on and put it on the news and be like, I have to do a current event for school. It's like, uh, <laughs> so I need to watch the news. Shit, what yeah. kind of news are you watching at 3.30? <laughs> uh, I don't know, it's on PBS. After school special, for sure. It's like, oh my goodness. So, Now, are you both in fraternities? Like, What is college life like? Yeah, I'm in a fraternity. Yeah, and so me as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, did you join them? Greek it? life guys. Oh there. my gosh, did you join them as freshmen? Yeah, I did. I joined them second semester because I was super bored. Yeah. Was, it was like bad. I kind of first year. I anticipated that happening, so I joined right off the bat. Yeah, that's what I should have done. Yeah. That's really what I should have done. Because they're all just flying under the radar. Exactly. Yeah, that doing the what only... they wanted to do, not partying too hard during COVID, but like hanging out with people. Other than just being locked in your dorm. Right. So you had more of a bubble because you had this group of friends. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But then you're bottom of the totem pole for like Ooh. a year. So. Which doesn't sound fun. <laughs> it's not. It's a- I don't. I mean, I wasn't. I never did a sorority. Catherine, you? No. No, no, no. Ed? Nope. Not in John. my art college. Nope. So this is a unique experience then. Because I know your father, uh, James. James, yeah. 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 James he, did. Mm-hmm. My dad did. But at your dad. But I don't think any of us None besides girls, James did. Think, yeah. Well, Liz, uh, didn't you have some experience through Mark? Oh, well, my mm. husband Mark was a big old Greek guy. In fact, he still... Uh, Sigma. He can hey, Sig. St- yeah, mm-hmm. he can still not... I think his fraternity, don't quote me, might be banned now from for partying from his campus. Where, where did he go? <laughs> I think they took away all Greek life there. Oh, I San Diego wrong, State, though. which okay. has a huge Greek system. Yeah, I yeah. Don't quote me. I don't know the current state of his fraternity. But did then when you were... But he was the yeah. treasurer. He was very involved. He still cannot eat a beet because that's basically what they fed him the entire <laughs> week. What was, yeah, what um, was the... I <laughs> week. Yes. I week, so he's always like, you know, beets are very on trend. And I'm like, Wait, I'd like a beet just, salad. Just and he's be almost clear. fainting. He was beaten. Yes, he was beaten right. by the beat. Yes, so <laughs> you can't do it. So how does Greek life look now on campus? I mean, especially when it started, it was COVID. So you're saying that was sort of your bubble. 
right? When I started, I was like talking to the older guys, and it was a lot of like, you should have seen us before, you should have seen <laughs> us before, a lot of that kind of stuff. But eventually, I just met everyone there. Super cool. And we just kind of laid low for a while. It was like small get togethers or like house parties, stuff that the school couldn't find out. Ah! And then once everything <laughs> picked up, it was, it's been pretty big and very fun. Yeah. Is there a house? Yeah. Do both yeah. of the Greek, they have big houses. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure about his. Yeah. The housing's a little bit different at Cal Poly. There's not a lot of like massive houses. Right. So like our main house houses like nine guys. We just have like seven or eight like satellite houses. Mm. Oh, um, satellite houses. Yeah, those are good to have. Now, do you both, where do you, you're <laughs> both not in the dorms anymore. Where do you live? I live off campus with my friends. In a big house, right? It's decent. It's six bedrooms. Of course, yeah. Rosemary, you know, your mother, who has an eye for decor, is always telling me, you know, elements of it that irritate her oh, or she wants to change. Are you kidding me? She I said, Rose, it. you can't be that mom. You can't go in there and be like, let me do a makeover. Yeah, yeah no, she yeah. hated it. It was like a shot ski on the mantle was our like only <laughs> decoration. Classy. <laughs> and now where are you living, William? Uh, pretty much similar situation. I'm in one of the satellite houses. So. Oh, okay, yeah. nice. Gosh, you know, I'm impressed that uh, I knew, I'm not surprised your parents kind of are letting you live in a house and have, you know, freedom like that. Didn't your sisters at UCLA basically live in like a converted, I don't want to say an ex-convent or something like that, wasn't it? Uh, I mean, no, it wasn't quite that. It was definitely <laughs> all female living and, you know. All right. Well, we'll have to get the more scoop dull, but... out of your sisters. Yeah, we got to get the girls in at yeah. some point. Yeah. I mean, very similar to our parents. Your parents relax sibling by sibling yes. by sibling. You're the fourth child out of five. It's just like they get... Being less down? stringent yeah yeah well i don't think being down <laughs> but even they relax because you know you were the fourth child to go through college so like there's a little more okay this is gonna work we can let them do a fraternity we can do this and that they're gonna make it through i mean when i look at our dynamic the first three siblings really went traditional college route mm -hmm. i was the first one that was like mm, both grades and opportunities like i need to do a city college somewhere and dad like, did not yeah. want me living at home. I was too much. So <laughs> it was like, let's find Santa Barbara City College. Let's at least put her away somewhere. <laughs> but I was the first non-traditional. That's, yeah. that's pretty standard for LA people today. I know. I was ahead standard. of my curve. I was ahead yeah. of my curve. I was setting the trend, Jack. Mm -hmm. I think just like these guys, dad foresaw you not being bored and was like, oh. get out of this house, actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, there was no way I could stay home. My social life was too dominating. It would have been out of control. Now, speaking of social lives, how is dating today? I just feel like it's so different because of social apps and even the Me Too movement and being much more respectful and aware of women like, and the, you know, the parameters. How do you date today? It's a very deep question, I feel yeah. like. I mean, so many layers. Definitely. I'll, oh, you have to wear a lot of layers? Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. important. That makes sense. Are, in Utah, it's a, it's a yeah, maybe. <laughs> it's a cold world we live in. It's a cold world we live in. Yeah, like personally, I never really tapped into like the dating apps. Mm. Um, I don't know. Just not super my thing. So I've kind of ended up dating on somewhat of a more old school fashion, just kind of like mutual friend type of situation. Like the my girlfriend right now, I just met through. Whoa, 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 whoa! I had to drop it at some point. Yes, breaking yeah. news! Wait, wait, wait! wait. Breaking, breaking news! Breaking uh -huh. news! Breaking Kilmon news! Yeah. All right, so you have an official girlfriend. It, yeah. For yeah. how long? Um, nine months. You no, know, I what? wait, 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 wait. Okay. First of all, this is the way to get to a Kilmon for information. And this is why you don't tell your aunts these things. <laughs> no, because <laughs> a lot of times when we all get together, and we're going to get back to. I want your view of what we we're just talking about. A lot of times when we get together, it's like you haven't even seen your siblings because you're all over the United States. So sometimes, you know, I'm trying to corner your sister or get information out of you. You all are catching up with each other. Mm -hmm. So we only get information sometimes by eavesdropping <laughs> or like asking a very pointed question. <laughs> or Rose and I will go on the walk the next morning or an, a couple aunts will call each other like, wait, did you hear this? Did you, you hear anything? This? Did you find uh, out anything? She didn't answer me this. Wait, how serious she is with that boyfriend? So... We have a hard time sometimes getting information out of you. And also, like, I don't know what your parents know, so I don't want to ask some oh, question yeah, at Christmas ask, yeah. mm -hmm. and be like, you know, <laughs> get literally in trouble because <laughs> you don't want them to know. And I just asked at the family holiday. So, all right, back to breaking news. Nine months you've been with your girlfriend. Yeah. What's her name? Her name is Annika. 
Uh, oh, I like the name. Yeah, yeah. Cute name. yeah well, Swedish. Um, Ooh. Is, that's <laughs> actually that's Swedish. What the name is. Actually, uh, she, <laughs> Swedish history. She lives in Washington. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jack was like, we're actually like from a, Sweden? Yeah, Sweden. Whoa. Jack, Jack got excited. Um, <laughs> and no, where, she, she's where did great. you meet her? At Cal Poly. She goes to Cal Poly. Um, she's, like, she's friends with uh, my friend's girlfriend. So That is actually how it kind of should that's, be done exactly that's the old school that you're talking about for mm-hmm. sure yeah. but that means you have to be out and be social and be open to meeting people you know face to face and mm-hmm. actually having a conversation so that's awesome is she in the same year as you yeah yeah same year yeah she's actually she's like coming through town tomorrow uh, incidentally what uh what uh, uh is grand uh, mary gonna meet her, her? Yeah. What? Grand oh Ma- my god Grand what uh-huh. This is, okay. I know. Okay, so have your parents met her or know about her? Yes. Yeah, okay. My, uh, I have a please. funny funny question to ask. Is she a business major? No. Okay. I would, never <laughs> I would never slander the public health major like that. It's very oh, perfect. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so my parents do know about her, of course, and they met her when my fraternity had a parents weekend. They came down for that in, like, the spring, and they met her then. Nice. Mm. Have your sisters met her? All but Marie. Marie's on the East Coast. So. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Way, Whoa. Yeah. All right. So, the con- listen, that was breaking news. Very exciting. And I like the it's, way it's you met her. reminiscent of uh, our mother telling our, the story of her meeting our dad and the parent like situation meeting the parents got to fly to the east coast to have a party for this one and they disapproved and had to fake break up for like six months oh man. so i hope it doesn't get that complicated well <laughs> listen but it's just interesting to hear like oh yeah right exactly when mom was in college yeah you could be dating someone that's how it goes now i mean marie is still mad at us you know <laughs> i mean because we just met marie's boyfriend who she's been with a couple of years right. and we thought because we were having this big family get together and dinner to meet him <laughs> We thought, I know John's annoyed us over there. You're never going to live it down if you keep bringing it up. Yeah. But it is good. It is good. And it's, I'm throwing myself and two other aunts who shall be unnamed. Well, I wasn't involved. Uh, fine. So now you Rosemary and Gigi. Gigi yeah. You know, we, I will say Gigi led the charge on this. And maybe Rosemary too. That we all thought it was going to be an engagement party. So or an engagement like, yeah. announcement. So we had like a cake and like champagne. And we're like, well, I'm not taking the champagne out of the refrigerator now. <laughs> like oh my oh, god yeah and of I course Marie this. after the fact like you know annoyed us rightfully so but we were just enthusiastic aunts okay all right so now we will know to pace this that you know you've only been with your girlfriend nine months you're still in college right. it's all good you'll tell us when it's appropriate when it's yeah. breaking news you'll let us know now are you mm-hmm. on ig at instagram or anything like their tiktok um uh yeah so i mean i'm on instagram technically i've like I don't know. I've kind of been out on it. I like deleted that a couple months ago. I'm just kind of, you know, in more of a Zen mindset right now. Oh, um, don't want to be distracted. Oh, exactly. Um, and then I, I've never really gone into TikTok. It's just I don't know. Don't not really. Not really. So yeah. There's no <laughs> place we can see a picture <laughs> of her. I was completely gonna stalk you after this. I have a bunch transparently. of pictures of her. You could. Get you them could just ask him. Oh, yeah, he I will show to. you. I I'm think. going mm-hmm. to. You don't have to be all nefarious and <laughs> stalk. <laughs> I, I thought I had to be. Art, I will not be. Okay, so Jack, currently, what's your status? Single. Oh my god. Single. Too. And ready to mingle? Like, are you using ready dating? To mingle. Are you using dating apps? Like, how are you? Uh, dating apps kind of suck. Like, so unless you're good at that kind of thing, mm-hmm. then you're not really gonna get much from it. I don't know. Like, I've been on there for fun because it's like literally like an arcade game. Yeah. Just yeah. Looking, you know? Swipe, swipe, swipe. Yeah. So, okay. So it's fun to just do that and whatever, but I don't know. Every time I've ever texted someone on there, it feels weird. <laughs> and so I just kind of abandon ship usually. So are you at fraternity parties? Like, because sorority girls come, right? No, normally oh, you yeah. have a mixer. Mm-hmm. I mean, that would be a traditional way to meet a girl. It's usually just like a party or they have like some themed thing with one sorority. For mm-hmm. mine, at least. Yeah, an exchange. An but, exchange. But now hookups or hooking up, is that still the term? Oh, God. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Sure. Okay, I'm still Good there. job, Liz. <laughs> I mean, I guess. All right. I don't n- it depends on what you mean, Aunt Liz. Well, I mean, like, don't, make, <laughs> d- don't clarify. You know what I mean? All making right. out or, like, you know, that's got to be much more difficult now, which you, rightfully so to some degree. Absolutely. You just have to be really careful because everything gets out everywhere. And right. it's, it's two seconds and your life is done in college. Like, I know a lot of people that they just don't do anything anymore because yeah. they got one accusation. It's over. 
Yeah, and both ways. It's like you would never want to put anybody in that position. And so Mm -hmm. you've got to be much more aware. Mm -hmm. So it's like, is drinking on campus a big deal? In Utah. Yeah, because Utah also has weird alcohol laws, right? With ounces and all this. Terrible. Yeah. Yeah, Well, you both are under, you both probably have not even had any alcohol yet. Yeah, probably not. I mean, you're only 20. So you've never been drinking. We don't need need to get into that. No, no, no. We don't need an official record other than you've never been drinking because you're 20. So go on. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) For sure. Uh Uh-huh. So, but I mean, I just think it's a different time. So you, I mean, you're meeting girls more face-to-face as well. More organically. I think that's the yeah yeah, that's the thing but you just you just can't be too aggressive you can't be like so out there like overly pushing to like meet them and stuff because then they'll find you weird and then Mm. they find the fraternity weird and then everything else goes Ah. but you just i don't know i haven't had trouble it's it's cool to meet girls there like that well i know you and your mom speak very frankly with each other Mm -hmm. which i think is great and i do think it's a, a time of being more of a gentleman right like, especially with your age demographic and up and coming where you really have to, there's more social rules that, you know, well, and I think it's more of an awareness too. Mm-hmm. I don't even think it's, you know, rules. I'm assuming that most people of your generation, because my daughter is 21 and you yeah, know, Sarah was only one year older than them. She just turned 21. Yeah, she just turned 21. And you guys, she did not want to drink on her birthday. Yeah, well, no. I think she's more <laughs> concerned with, like, you know, with her migraines and stuff. She doesn't would, want to trigger any. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's having... Those are scary. She's having a lot of physical problems. She's like, maybe I won't ever drink, even though I was, like, weirdly, like, I could make you this, or I could make you that. <laughs> Do you want to try this? She's like, good lord, take a chill pill, mom. I'm like, oh, this is weird. Chill she, pills? Like, is that a different kind of Cabernet I didn't know about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I would say this generation is just more aware and more thoughtful about interactions with other people, whether mm-hmm. that be friendships or dating or whatever. It's a different mindset, I think. It's a better one, too. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, but it can make it, like you said, a little more... Um, you gotta be so thoughtful. Yeah, you gotta be thoughtful yeah. while you're dating and who you approach and how and, and it's how like, and yeah. why and yeah. And mm-hmm. also like rejection. It's like, you know, rejection's a big thing and it's like you need to learn how to handle rejection in any form and sometimes dating, you know, some people don't handle it well and it's like, yeah, you need to as a mom talk to your boys about rejection and mm, dating and sure. life. Yeah. It's like, okay. It happens, so don't take it that personally, move on to some degree. So that was very interesting. So Girlfriend, single, ready to mingle. Mm -hmm. All right. We got the spectrum here. Now, this summer, you are both here in L.A. That's why we have you here, which is Mm -hmm. so exciting. You came home for the summer. Mm -hmm. Do you think you would stay in Utah for a summer? Yeah, I would. Yeah. There's so much to do during summer. But that's more activity-wise because you're here. You currently actually have one or two internships, right? Mm Mm-hmm. One of them being with Fred, Fred Lobion, who is my sister-in-law's partner, mm-hmm. and then you also have a couple uh, one-offs that you've been doing in production, being in that realm. Yes, that was super cool. Yeah, I mean, listen, there's so much production here in Los Angeles. If you start putting out feelers, like I'm ready, available, not that expensive because I'm a young kid, you will get work. Exactly. I was lucky enough to get this one. This, what was this, this last one? This was like one? a real-time shoot. Oh, really? It was a two-day commercial shoot for a canned wine company. Canned wine? I know. Sounds delicious. Uh, I, I left with some of it. Uh, what? Check your fridge. You to give to your mom. To give to your yes, mom, I right? Gave to my Check mom. my yes. fridge. Yeah, yeah. you've got it in your fridge right now. Boom, it's Saturday oh, did, night. Did Get ready, people. Did she sacrifice the one I... Can I... I, uh, I don't know, but it appeared somewhere. I don't know uh, if she actually bought it. She definitely did. <laughs> can I guess at the brand? Capri and Sons? Yeah. Ah. Capri, like Capri the no, juice. He is joking. I know. That would, <laughs> actually, that would should, be really good. Actually, to be should honest. Capri should add just booze to those things. Mm. Yeah, but they got to look at Johnny's outraged. But yeah, you'd have to change the packaging. And I think that's awesome. So, and then you're here hanging out with the parents. Are they putting any rules on you? No. Just oh. car, you really, oh, you know, the whole car sitch. <laughs> yeah, there's constantly. You really got to, like, just keep everyone in mind when you're leaving the house. Making sure the car is still available. Making sure the car is available or someone doesn't have something pressing. And then all of a sudden you're on the other end of the valley. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I mean, you have more cars than we ever did with that many teenagers and <laughs> adults in our household. So... William, you're mm-hmm. here for the summer. Where are you staying and what are you up to? <laughs> I, oh, I'm staying at Grandma's house. <laughs> Boom. It's a great time. We have fun. 
<laughs> no, I just, I know she had to like clear out and make room for you mm-hmm. because, you know, um, she now lives downstairs. I Oh, you did? Oh, yes. who knew? I got a free Alamany basketball jersey out of it. Nice. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> who had that hidden in some closet? It was pristine condition, like from when did she work there? Um, she's been retired for almost ten years. Yeah, it's like older, okay. early two thousands, like Wilson basketball jersey, brand new. I was like, I'll take it. Oh, well, it was all <laughs> worth it then. <laughs> yeah. And why are you here? What are you up to this summer? Yeah, so I have an internship in Los Angeles. I'm working for a structural concrete subcontractor. So it's like in the construction industry. And is it downtown that LA? Civil. It, well, yeah. Oh, uh, construction management is like a branch of civil engineering. Um, yeah, so it's it's in Inglewood. It's like right by the airport, kind of. Inglewood? Um, yeah. Oh, well, because it's a stadium or something, right? What yeah, is it? It's, uh, so the Clippers are building a new stadium in Inglewood. So that's the project that I'm on. And that's right next to the SoFi Stadium. Yeah, right across the street. Mm -hmm. Oh, across the street. I didn't realize that. And how are you enjoying that? It's super cool. And I I mean, how much time do you have to arrive in the morning? Because construction is... Yeah, yeah, I do have to get there at 7. Which is a little rough. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. There's not a ton of traffic in the morning, so... Are you... Because the Kilmont trait... um, we're not notoriously early risers, but I don't know if with your mom's DNA that maybe... Mm. I mean, I've kind of forced myself nice. to uh, become an early riser. <laughs> if you go to bed early enough, it's, you can do it. Oh, that, so. the the, dis, the kill my Well, discipline. that's also yeah, the problem the that we have. We don't go to bed early. Right. That's, no, yeah. that you're not an early riser naturally. Mm-mm. Jack, no, no. Never have. No, Rosie and I will, will walk early in the morning, and you know, she, you know, to kind of beat the. We're heat. leaving our household full of sleeping boys on both ends. I mean, no one, and you get home and they're still sleeping. So you're like, all right, wake up, dudes, come on, come on. Now that is interesting when you talk about discipline. You know, one of the things that both of your families did. You're both involved in sports. Where you weren't running, were you? Like your sisters, like cross country. Yeah, I was actually in high school. I, I did oh. cross country. I I don't know. I didn't buy into it. Like a ton, but I was on the team, you know, did the races. And, I agree. Yeah. I mean, so you, will you independently go out and run now? No. <laughs> it, it is not my thing. It's kind no of thanks. always a little torturous. No. No. I mean, it is interesting. Running, John runs, Eddie, you run. Yep. Um, your mother was not a distance runner, but a speed runner. It's shocking. I mean, I will say, Jack, it was as a kid watching you know, because you be you. I mean, especially probably you, William, be dragged to your siblings' sports events because that was just what was happening with the well, family. Well, especially if you were younger, you're going to get oh, yeah. dragged to older siblings, mm-hmm. and you're not going to leave the younger siblings at home. So it's like, come on. So many track meets and events like that, we'd have to go watch Rosemary. And maybe another sibling was uh, as well as participating. I for sure was not a runner. Zero interest. Mm-hmm. Too hot. I, the whole situation. I at one point thought I could do hurdles. I mean, on what delusional plane I was on. But anyways, I think I did one, fell over, and was like, and I'm done. But Rosie was the type of runner that the gun would go off, like, you know, ready, set, go, boom. And Rosie would just take out of that gate and would have a kick. Like, you would not believe. You're like, oh, she's not going to win. Oh, she's not going to Oh, my God. Oh. And you just freak out. She was such an incredible runner until about freshman year in high school. And then she lost interest mm-hmm. for various reasons. Yeah. Once it gets to high school, oof. Yeah, no. I mean, I started in high school, and it was intense. Were you, wait, cross country as well? or? Yeah. I did cross country and track for three years. What did you in co- uh, track? Uh, I was 800 mile and two mile. The worst ones. <laughs> the long ones. The fun ones. Ew. But does this teach... And they would, they would swap them in between each other. So it'd be like, I'd have to do 800 and then the two mile and then the mile. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Thanks. Fun. And Uncle John, you will, uh, you've will you run with William before, right? Uh, a co- a couple he's run times. with me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Jack. Mm-hmm. 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 Because John mm-hmm. still is a runner, and you still run, right? Yeah, I still run, but uh, for some reason, headphones on has never really been like a group run vibe. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm usually running to like some, you know, dance music or some DJ or something like that. I I have actually been kind of on the solo workout for a real long time because after uh, dragging John around on a bike, much younger than me, I realized like, well, he can't go on the mountain bike rides with me. I think I got to figure out. A Walkman and a cassette, and I definitely borrowed Rosemary's like sports Walkman, the yellow Sony Sports one. Got in trouble for that a couple times. So you were borrowing my bike and her Walkman. Yeah, oh, yeah. Gosh, 
And both of them, believe me, did not get returned in original condition. No, exactly. <laughs> well, I was the one that lost the Walkman eventually, so. Oh, oh well. Sean. Oh. Yeah, how do you guys deal with, like, you know, sibling um, contention? You had three older sisters. Mm -hmm. Did you feel bombarded by them or beloved? I mean, definitely bombarded at times, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know. I get kind of some of that as a distant memory of when we were all in the house together. I feel like once they moved out and like I had a little more space, mm. I felt a lot more beloved, like via the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, they're great. And they social post about William Yu, and it, it seems very like they're excited about you, where you are in your life, and especially if you come visit or vice versa. Yeah. Definitely. Listen, those girls are on IG, you know, Instagram, Insta, whatever you want to call it. And a lot of cheese platters. I really like <laughs> mm -hmm. when they post that and out eating together and mm -hmm. toasting each other. And I love it. I don't know if there's a secret account that I'm not aware of. You know, that the, no, you're, you might be following the official yeah. aunt related account. I think there's only one account. <laughs> but now, younger brother, JP. Now, he was notorious, uh, you know, man, he had a lot of personality. We'll put that as a younger, <laughs> as a, as a wow. young, young lad, you know. So in some ways, you felt oh, similar to Rosie and I, kind of in a weird middle position in the family because you weren't the youngest, you were the first male, um, and you weren't the oldest. So being a big brother to JP, how was that? Yeah, I mean, again, definitely when we were in the same house together, it was a little hectic, especially <laughs> like... When I was younger and he was younger and we were both very immature, mm -hmm. it was crazy. It was a lot of wrestling, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I don't know, like in recent years, he's become a lot more mature, um, which is cool. And so just like getting to talk to him on the phone now is nice. And he's the only one at home now, right? Yeah, he is. And he's like, he's gone on a couple like two week trips this summer. So he's been like out of the house. And so my parents have been like alone, like empty nesters. Wow. So. Which I actually, I, I talked to your dad, James, our big brother, on Father's Day, and I basically asked him, I'm like, oh, where are all the kids? And he was laying down. I go, wait, you're by yourself? Yeah. You, just you and Michelle? Like, the two of you are home alone? He's like, yeah. I'm like, what are you going to do? <laughs> because, <laughs> I mean, five kids spread over, like, you know, it's like someone's always there. Yeah, it's been like 30 years. That That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's That's, but it's awesome that now, like, What's that going to look like? You know, maybe they'll get a cat when all of you are gone. I don't know. Maybe. I can't imagine my dad enjoying that. But they maybe. did. They did have cats before you were born. Yeah, I don't think my dad was stoked on it, but they had them. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, listen, as a child, there are there's photographic evidence that your dad had a big heart for animals. And actually, there was a litter of little kittens who was abandoned or a need to be basically fed. And it was your dad who stepped in and did that. Mm. So he does have a little soft spot in his heart for animals, but you, know, you have five kids. <laughs> sort of yeah, like, let yeah. me just focus on these. That's what I was gonna say. Maybe he used to have that soft spot. In his well, life. yeah, and now maybe he'll just enjoy the quiet mm -hmm. of things calming down. Or maybe he'll get back into his acting career. You never oh, know. Oh, oh my God, that would be the best. Oh, <laughs> I had no idea. He was all over the place. James was by far the most successful sibling in the industry of the child what? actors. I thought it was like yeah. William. Uh, I, I will give James the credit for sure. Mm -hmm. Little House on the wow. Prairie, National Commercials. And it's really his fault because once he decided to retire at like 12 years old, my dad was like, retire. he's the one who's really doing it. Yeah, so he's like, none it, of you, yeah. yeah, none of you, the rest of you have booked enough for maybe driving in Hollywood all the time. Forget it. So he had a very Ron Howard vibe because he was very intelligent and he was kind of a little apple pie looking and could be very comfortable talking to adults. So in an audition. Even now, he's comfortable talking to him. Well, no, I actually sort think he's of. less comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, I'm totally joking. I think as a kid, he was very mature and articulate for his age. So he'd go into an audition, and it wasn't like you were trying to pull something out of him. He'd just be like, well, I just left the Boy Scouts. Like, eh. <laughs> They'd walk out, and they'd go, so nice to meet you, James. He's like, thank you, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, he booked a lot. So, all right, so now your sibling dynamic, you have a younger brother, Luke, who's been on our podcast before. For. Yes. I've traveled with you a lot because my son would basically be as if you had a third. A, He's always been. Yeah, the my third. Yes, sibling. the youngest. And be, there's a lot of torturing that's gone on, but it's, it's toughened him up. So, as an only child, it's probably. I it's owe probably you. been Thanks. helpful. Yeah, it's I probably mean, maybe. It has, it has. Right. So, you and Luke, you're close enough in age because you're only, what, two years apart about? Three. Three. Three basically full years. And you know, you've definitely different personalities. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, for sure. <laughs> I feel like we're a little bit on the opposite side of the personality spectrum. But you're still young, because I do think it, there's something to be said as you get older. Yeah, just as William was saying, as you all get older and you're not in the same house or whatever, mm -hmm. your whole vibe towards each other can change. And uh, Speaking of... I mean, Catherine and I. What do you mean? We were always she great. She was a total asshole to me Whoa. growing up. I was a total asshole, yes. <laughs> okay, sorry. It was more just like I didn't <laughs> I didn't really exist, and it didn't help that we didn't go to the same high school. Right. So I went to high school with your mother, Rosemary Jack, and then Aunt Gigi. Mm -hmm. But Catherine and I, although we could have been in high school at the same time, we didn't go to the same high school. But mm -hmm. even before that, I think the chaos of the house, my defense mechanism was like arm's distance with everybody. So, you know, which was kind of shitty, but that's what I did. So I <laughs> survived. Yeah. And I realized I could dominate the younger half. The older, you know, three siblings really were like, get away, Liz. I'm like, well, then I'm going to pivot this and I'm going to become the queen of the younger kids. So that's kind of, you yeah, know. Yeah, that is, that's kind Still of, wearing yeah. that crown. Yeah, well, primarily really Rosie and Virginia and then Eddie and John were young enough that it was like, I was old enough where it's like, oh, I'll drive you places like a much older sibling. But uh, Luke and you, we've been on many trips where, you know, there's fights and... <laughs> I don't know why, but my brain keeps going to Tahoe. Oh, I feel like there's always something that happened there. Well, there's like irritation like there's something like you two will just needle each other and as an aunt you know I, I don't normally like stick my nose in there but it's like oh my god would they just stop this is really gonna end up when the fury just grows oh my god the two of you it's like a watching a kettle like yeah it's like, not not quite like that anymore <laughs> it's also like can you two separate yeah I know there's always a need mm -hmm. between us and it's whoever wants it the most Oh, God, it's funny. so brutal. I mean, my son, Ethan, will basically be like, just he knows to like clear out. Like, he just knows, like, I'm not going to get, get in the middle out of, the of this, way. get yeah. out of Dodge. But even if he caused it. <laughs> I feel like that was the two dynamics. It'd be like me and Luke fighting, or then it'd be like Luke and Ethan. Ethan. Oh. And I would be like, oh, I'm gone. And oh, just yeah. walk away. Because I'm like, I'm not taking the fall. I don't want to get no involved. Way. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, as cousins, I do think for the most part, we don't have. There's not a cousin um, dynamic that is contentious or when we all get together, there's not like any cousins that I'm aware of, maybe you guys tell us the scoop, that don't get along or, you know, are not happy to see each other. I don't think so. No, which is no. nice. No, it is nice. Yeah. We all get along well. Yeah. And then there's enough of you that are close in age as well. So, you know, I mean, we all, the youngest I was just saying is a third grader, Lauren. Mm-hmm. Although there's hope, Eddie and John. Add more to the numbers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Well, I was just away with friends. And I said, well, gosh, your next like phase is going to be grandparents. And she was like, oh, my God, shut up. And I go, well, sorry, but aren't all the siblings you have, like, they're done. It's a wrap. Having kids. And she's like, well, how about you? And I said, I have a little bit of hope still. Like, you know, Eddie and John, I could still be an aunt again. You know, might happen. Our, uh, our dad didn't have John until he was, what, 48? Yeah. So yeah. I mean, he had seven, so I'm a little behind. <laughs> That's some catch up to do. I'm gonna have to have two sets of triplets, and then oh. a set of twins. Are you out there? Okay, great. <laughs> Are you listening? Yeah. Are you listening? He's all, available. All, yeah. all interested? Please DM us at Family Dynamics at Family Dynamics. So there you go. So then your plans are possibly to move back. Would you stay in San Luis Obispo, or do you think? What are your plans, William? I mean, it would be awesome to stay in San Luis Obispo. I love it there. There's not a ton of opportunity. Period. And oh. especially in construction, I don't know. They're not, like, building a ton of new stuff in San Luis Obispo. There's, like, a couple projects. that, Like, Los Angeles, obviously, there's a million projects. So there's a good chance I would end up down here. Things are going on, yeah. You do a skate park. Yeah, I mean, that'd be awesome. <laughs> it's like all concrete, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, Jack, we discussed it, but we think because of Hollywood and the lure back here is a good chance. Yeah, it'd have to be something, like, either a complete, like, career path switch or, like, mm -hmm. a really good job out there or something like that. But now, I, I like Utah. I know Utah is gorgeous. Having, like having I said, a property out there would be oh, lucrative. Like in I the said, future. oh my gosh, it's booming. Yeah. Now, as looking at your aunts and uncles in this older generation, particularly Jack, like you've, I've always been around you since you've been born. Mm -hmm. Always Auntie Lizzie, <laughs> and then I, you know, more. It's like I even came to visit you in New Jersey. I babysat you guys on a couple trips. Oh yeah, yeah. There's all those girls. <laughs> you know. 
Auntie Liz would be taking care of you for a couple of days, you know, to fly in. And it was just, oh yeah, there was always, basically Teresa, your older sister Teresa would be the one that would be like in the middle of the night, Aunt Liz. And I'd be like, oh my God, you know, roll, she'd rolled out of bed. Was, <laughs> what you want to eat? Like, you were very easy. I think, you know, fourth child just was like, hey man, I'm just rolling with whatever's happening here. Yeah, now Teresa's a problem. I'll grant you that. What? Uh, <laughs> not a okay. problem, I'd say a very strong personality. Sure. Oh, I mean, she'd lead me down the road of like what she'd want to eat, and then you put it in front of her, like, nope. You're like, wait, I just made this all for you. You said you wanted it. But, you know, very strong personality. So, what kind of is your perspective when you look at all these older siblings and coming together for family, you know, get togethers? Because you you will often come down for usually Thanksgiving. I mean, pre COVID, you were down at least for Thanksgiving and probably once during the summer for August birthdays. Yeah. So there were some. Christmas, Easter. Yeah, we'd be down here a couple of times. Yeah, I, I definitely always look forward to that. It was a good time, and especially with the cousins. But also, the older generation is cool as well, I guess, or whatever. Oh, we're super cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. oh. You guys make great snacks, so yeah. you can come to the party, I guess. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. Yeah, it was always a great time, and I was like obviously bummed during COVID that I didn't get any of that. So I'm yeah, that was very excited none. to be down here, and we'll have August birthdays. And I know. It'll be awesome. Oh, yeah, August birthdays. And you just, I mean, you've been surrounded by the aunts and uncles on our side constantly basically the whole time my whole life <laughs> yeah <laughs> what sorry and, actually, and your, dad, and your yeah. dad's side both of your you know your mother's side and your dad's side actually is pretty involved big families as well yeah no my dad's side's pretty big yeah which is nice I mean, two other siblings and then just a lot down the chain after that and i'll still say i have a boat wait whose godmother are you you're not william's godmother are you oh yeah (gasps) yeah i am you need to get step it up well Well, i was just joking with him the other day because he's been coming over for dinner on sundays a couple times since he's been out here so it's myself and eric godparents not just me this is the first sibling that been asked to be a godparent. Oh, is it? Oh. Yes. Oh. Nobody else was a godparent at this point, so it's very prestigious. Seriously. Well, you guys were living in England, and I flew out. Eric did not. Sarah was like nine months old or whatever, and so I leave baby Sarah at home, and I fly to England, and you were tiny. I mean, mm. you were maybe two months old, like really oh. small. Was this for the baptism? Yes, for your baptism. Okay. So came out. Did whatever you're supposed to do. I mean, I have many times. I mean, he picked like probably the least Catholic sibling. I was just going to say, I have multiple times on this podcast outed myself as a very non-practicing Catholic and from early, like kind of no Mm -hmm. filter bones about it. Like, no, I'm kind of not really doing this. But then my husband, Eric, at some point around uh, Sarah being born or I forget what, he was like, I was raised Catholic but never got baptized. I should go and do this class with Grand Mary. And then, of course, then he's also not really very Catholic. So I, anyway, your father has us be the godparents, myself and Eric, and then we promptly did nothing about it. <gasps> I know we're terrible. So just before he came over this summer, like, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I'm like, oh, yeah, he's, you know, He's our godchild. And Eric's like, well, maybe yours. I'm like, no. Wow. Ours. <gasps> like, he didn't, oh. Well, because he didn't remember because he also didn't go. So it like sure. made virtually no impact on him. And sure. we've done nothing about it because <gasps> I'm a jerk. So I was like, oh, no, um, honey, no, <laughs> we are his godparents, even though we've done nothing about it. And he's like, oh, shit. Well, no time like the present. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get in there. They realize yeah. they've had me over for dinner several uh, times. Yeah. It's been awesome. There's been lots of cake involved. Yeah. Eric is very involved in trying to decide what we're going to eat. He's really, you know, he's like, William's coming over. We got to, what kind of cake are we going to have? What are we going to make? It's like, oh, Lord. Because modern day godparents, I feel, to some degree, are just, you need to be involved in their lives and a presence and supportive and that. So, you can, so you're saying I'm a failure. No. Well, like I said, start it up right. now. We, exactly. We've pivoted. We're doing a great job now. Mm-hmm. We've had them over like three times. Whew. Oh, and I'm still <laughs> irritated at your mother and father that I was not your godmother. I know. No, I love. John and Andre. I love them. I understand why the choice was made. Yes. But I'm going to say it was a mistake. <laughs> no, they kind of just ditched me and move up to the Bay Area uh, and not spin it for the rest. Well, of course they did. They were following their only child. Oh, and, yeah. I, you know, I was very anxious to become, a, I am your daughter's godmother. Yeah, you're Sarah's godmother. And, I think uh, it's it's you and James. Right. I have three goddaughters. I'm just putting it out there. I'd like a godson, but, you know, <laughs> I don't know why no one's asked me, you know, at this point. But I remember when Rosemary was like, 
I think I don't know if I hosted the party at my house for your baptism. No, no, no. I came over and helped set it up, and with Andre, and I was just like so boiling inside. <laughs> I was. I was like, I cannot believe. She I mean, did not you ask do. Me. Yeah, you like the honorific of the Godmother for sure. Yeah. yeah. And then I try to stay someone involved or touching base or you know. I mean, you do a good job. To Sorry, William. Some Sorry. degree. Right. You, know, you, Catherine, you, you got the crappy there. one. No, get in there. You can do it. There's still time. Oh, know? yeah. I mean, you know, we're all in now that Eric knows. Mm-hmm. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Perfect. Let's just say what nice young men you are. Thank you. Thank you. You know, so it was lovely having you here. I feel like we barely touched upon. I'll have a whole list of questions next time you're here. I know. Please. No. I'm back Thanksgiving. Okay, we're going to we'll uh, we're going to be books. prepared. A holiday yes. episode. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Holiday special. Cuz I listen, one of the things we'll get into about the holidays is, you know, you guys are going up the gift giving. Remember we had to get assigned one of the kids? JP mm. I'm going to have to call out at some point. There was one incident that I got assigned him and his reaction still to this day was so priceless to the gift I gave him. <laughs> it was like, "Okay, but you messed it up, I'm guessing." disappointment you know it wasn't the response i thought but that you know what i love is like kids don't have a lot of filters so you can give them a gift and there's either total joy or like what the heck is this so this is garbage oh, yeah was yeah. The, what was the no, gift? no no i'm gonna save it i'm gonna save it okay. you know we'll have, we gotta have jp on here so it was absolutely fantastic having two of our nephews yeah. which is jack mm-hmm. fog jack fog do you have anything to promote or social handle you would like to put out no <laughs> not at the moment and we I'm, know, yeah. I'm trying to get back on social media but I don't like posting I like keeping no my need. life right I know my you're both zen about it as yeah. you said William alright exactly so they have nothing to promote they're just living their lives William has a girlfriend that was breaking news and Jack is single ready to mingle people so thank you so <laughs> much for joining us on Family Dynamics please follow us on Family Dynamics with a K and leave comments subscribe to our Patreon we appreciate you listening and once again that was family Family dynamics. dynamics